This is an opportunity of a lifetime. Can you imagine having a building that is concerned just with brain sciences in which we can bring engineers, physicists, chemists, psychologists all into the same building? We can bring neural science to a completely new level. This new initiative and the green science building will give us the opportunity to create something that brings together all of the neuroscientists at Columbia and at the same time to combine that core focus on brain and mind with the technologies that are going to help shape the field in the coming years. Columbia has succeeded in being one of the greatest universities of the last century and certainly will be of this century in part because people invested the time, energy, and resources in creating physical spaces that inspire the mind. You walk into certain environments and you think better. I mean, it's just, it's like you walk onto the campus of Morningside Heights. You feel smarter, you are smarter. The problems we want to attack, the problems of the human mind, we are decades away from understanding them. We need to amass power. We need the opportunity to interact. We need the environment in which to interact. The ambitions to put together the social sciences and the neurosciences, it's daring and it's, it's courageous and it has high potential. Economics depends very much on decision making and so the more we can understand about decision making, the better able we will be to build economic models that make sense. These in-between areas are very soft, but they're so fantastically interesting. And can you imagine being an undergraduate at Columbia and seeing these new areas of knowledge emerge? Mind-brain behavior is, is, has two functions. It's the, the initiative and the green building in Manhattanville. It is to build even greater neuroscience and to realize the, the promise. And it's to link the work there with every other part of the university. This is a I think a remaking, and not to be overblown about this, but this is a remaking, I think, of the intellectual life of the university, and that's the next 30, 40 years. This is a building for science at Columbia, the scale of which I think no one who has been at Columbia for a period of time has ever conceived of. And it also presents some challenges. So how do you maintain intimacy and communication in a very large construction? And this is something that Renzo Piano and his group have thought very hard about in terms of how you populate that building with a thousand scientists and maintain interactions that range from a small um, impromptu group of three or four people who want to discuss an idea all the way through to more formal presentations that attract 150 to 200 people. The Jerome L. Green Science Center development site is going to be very quickly transformed because a lot of the initial work, the installation of the slurry walls, is mostly going to happen below grade. One of the benefits of the deep basement is to be able to take some functions that would have otherwise been on the ground floor or on upper stories of the building and move them below grade. The pedestrian experience is now less cluttered by cars circling the area looking for parking or delivery trucks looking where they can make a delivery. The simple act of being able to direct them to a below grade space and accept all deliveries in one location is not only efficient, but from an environmental perspective is actually a much better way to go. This is a building that is going to be located in Manhattan in the local Harlem community and the building will only be a success if it engages that community. We're placing great emphasis on the development of an educational outreach center that has as its goal to try and inform the local community from a K through 12 level upwards of what brain science means in the 21st century. Everybody is impacted by problems of um, the nervous system in one form or another, Alzheimer's disease, neurodevelopmental disorders like autism, and unless one is informed, and perhaps even if you are informed, those are mystifying concepts. Why does my grandmother, is my grandmother gradually losing her powers of recall? What is, what is happening in the body in that time? So part of what we're trying to do in this educational outreach center is provide an easy way of answering questions that the local community has about disorders that are relevant to them. 
of the sciences that are emerging in the 21st century as being really dominant sciences, you've got to say brain sciences among them. I mean, I would think it is the most interesting science. So just as, you know, the study of the gene was the most important question, 1950 to 2000, so the study of the mind, next hundred years at least. So we have to do science, we have to be productive, we have to, we're scientists and that is our stock in trade to test hypotheses, validate them or refute them. But beyond that, it's going to be trying to do something at Columbia as a university that really shows the way the university can operate um, in all disciplines. On one end, you see the neuroscientists studying the impact on emotional decision making through the studies of the brain. And for us, it's really important to incorporate that in our models. I think the science will be so extraordinary. And since this is what drives all of our actions in the long run, it's something we want to do and we have to do. This must be a space that bespeaks a love of knowledge and ideas. This must be a space that nurtures a sense of shared and common purpose for those here and throughout the university who commit their lives to pursuing the love of knowledge and ideas. And the thread that will bind us together will be the new discoveries and the advances in knowledge that will yet happen here and will change the world.